Hi and welcome. This is going to be a reading for the sign of Scorpio. So Scorpio got a little bit shortchanged and their message got cut off in the readings that I did that I uploaded three signs per video. So we're going to do something just for Scorpio this time and the next one out is going to be Aquarius. The magician was on the bottom of the deck here. Let's see what just flew out. King of Shells, Harmony and Integrity. I like that one. So Scorpio, you are definitely in your own energy here. And um, it looks like taking a lot of responsibility for the harmony within the home, perhaps, and um, taking the, um, the role of the bigger person in some type of a way. And it may be a masculine energy that is um, stepping up in a relationship too. So under the deck, we have six, love and trust. That's the sign of the lovers. I really think it's neat that they used these wolf um, totem energies here. It's, it's really quite cute to me. So on the pre-shuffle, I did get the Three of Wands here on the back of the Vice Versa deck, and the other side shows as the back side of the Moon card. Or wait, is that the front? I guess that um, that is the Moon. So the Moon to me is the Mother, the Feminine. And... Uh, We've got the two dogs there too, the two dogs, the two lovers here perhaps shown with the moon card. I think that we're going to see more references to that in a moment, but I want to just uh, put that down in a second. This side was speaking to me a little bit more. It was some type of new venture um, or a new level where it's almost like a blank canvas. I was kind of seeing it as someone that is got a new piece of land or a new job where things are sort of in disarray. You can look at this and really tell where your input is very valuable and you can understand what you bring to the situation. Looking at the um, two pre-existing wands that have been sitting here stabbed into the soil it's almost like and they're rooted there and they have some good um leaf growth on the top so it's like there's something to be built upon it's not completely a blank canvas but it's very very new and it has a lot of room for improvement there's this cracked soil and the rocky deserty look but he's got this this alchemical ball in his hand and his his staff may not be rooted and it may not have the growth shown on it but look at those light codes so it's as though we're stepping through through some type of a threshold here shown with these two staffs or presiding over a situation to make impact. And it's like that ball to me is fire and water, the opposing elementals. So maybe in first the sign of Scorpio, uh, you are the water sign, but you're a very fiery water sign. So it's, it's a lot for you to have mastered your emotions in such a way that you come as a balanced Scorpio to this card calls out investigate where you can um, shift and change a situation. And then on this other tarot deck, we have queen of pentacles that was on the bottom and three cards that had popped out this sun card, the 10 of pentacles and the four of wands. So these to me are, children, home, legacy, and successful accomplishment, making a commitment to something. So 
the sun card doesn't necessarily mean that you already have children. To me, it could mean that you're starting an endeavor working with children or because we've got so many family and home and parenting cards already showing themselves, perhaps it's the, the, um, the lovers here discussing where to go to live, to um, discussing plans for a commitment to a relationship or a partnership endeavor. So this could be love or money for you at this time. We've got that Queen of Pentacles and the Ten of Pentacles. So it's like the legacy, the successful outcomes that we're working towards here. And the sun is the happiest card in the deck. So, yes, let's see what these cards would like to reveal here. Got a couple coming out. Yep. Okay. You feel like home. That's what I was getting off of this. And the initials M, N, O, or P may be part of your reading, either a person or an enterprise or an endeavor of some sort. Doesn't have to. This is a general message for somebody who needed that. Okay. A couple more coming out. Secret admirer. So somebody really admires you and is sensing that you are somebody that they'd either want to work with or to commit to or with in this endeavor. So you're bringing this, this staff of light codes with you. And um, yeah, it's like there's that mask on the moon card. Yeah, it's um there's something there that I'm not tapping into and maybe you're investigating this individual and admiring them and looking into the background here of whether or not you want to bring this person into your enterprise. This person or yourself could be a demon slayer on some level, uh putting to rest the toxic energies of their past when they weren't at their best. They've learned a lot of lessons and they don't hesitate to continue to learn. Trauma bonding has been something that they've worked a lot on. And so maybe this is something that you're looking into here. Live a life full of love and life, but still master the throat punch is under the deck. So I think that we'll leave it there. So somebody's a real baddie, which is good to see, I guess. Let's see what, what else is coming out on this one. Since that moon card keeps talking to me, I saw the two of cups and the queen of swords facing down. So somebody may be putting a, um, someone to the test working hard. Somebody's watching you work and admiring you. There's Ace of Cups. You're gaining someone's trust by the way that you use your energies, the choices that you make. Your life is self-evident and your energy speaks for itself. I like that. So somebody's really resonating with you and wants to have you on their team, I guess is what I'm Hearing. Okay, the uh, Hermit card backside is showing itself. Somebody re-emerging, looking at opportunities, and look at the uh, face in the in the moon here is actually the uh, the face of one of the other cards. I do believe it's on the moon card itself, but um, we'll get back to that on the bottom of the deck. Knight of Swords. So somebody wants to come charging in. They've got a lot of information from their investigations. And this may be the Demon Slayer here. It's like somebody who's very inspired and active and making a huge amount of impact. But maybe sometimes you sense that they can be a little... A little fiery is that the thing a little harsh with their words 
Oh, and there's the two dogs down on the bottom here. Do you see them? <laughs> That's so interesting. So they were looking at the moon, but here we've got the moon here. The lantern light, is that the... It looks almost like a sunrise. But so the dogs here, they have this golden egg with the serpent wrapped around it. There's so much imagery here. And he's almost, he's in rags. It's been a long journey. Is that a crab in the foreground? It seems misplaced if it is. I don't know. But um, it's as though there's something mysterious here that you've been trying to take in, maybe to sense or investigate what a person is like behind the scenes in their own personal space um, before moving in. The Four of Cups stayed on the deck. Hmm. Some level of dissatisfaction or boredom here, because I saw bored easily. I see 1111 under the deck here. Queen of Cups and Temperance. So the Queen of Cups is monitoring, measuring her buy-in, one foot in, one foot out, and tempering her emotions and her engagement here on the emotional level. So now we do have King and Queen of Cups showing themselves. And the Tower and the Magician started sliding out from underneath. Still the Queen of Cups. Hmm. So maybe you, being Scorpio, when you were not at your best from before, it may be because there was some trauma in your past and you were suspicious of trauma bonding in a situation. So maybe you have sliced through with some harsh words or separating words where another individual was was admiring your energy you might have been defensive and um but there's uh, something coming back together there's trust being earned here so then we have these three cards coming out is that the six of cups with the empress and the wheel of fortune so i know a lot of people don't care to entertain exes, but if you are one of those people, you may be happy with this energy. Um, and this doesn't always mean an ex, just to clarify. It's rebalancing the past successes and failures. So Six of Cups is very nice with the lovers because it allows us to rebalance our emotional waters before re-engaging. And with Six of Cups and the Empress, uh, it's talking about balancing our own sense of self-worth and being able to feed the inner self and to feel that respect to, to ascend onto our own throne of emotional self-mastery here and being able to ground your energies into earthly pursuits in a way that feels fulfilling and self-sustaining to you. And um, the Wheel of Fortune is saying that you're sitting pretty right now and that whatever has been, I want to say, plaguing you or bothering you, limiting you, there's a shift and a change on the in the winds, if you will, where the individuals here are having almost a a rebirth of their innocence in a situation and coming together here. So fortune's wheel brings a lot in for you. Anything else? Three of pentacles and six of swords. So yeah, six and six here. We've got a lot of sixes. Rebalancing is, is important for you. It may be somebody with some Libra or Libra or Leo even in their chart, uh, or maybe you do, but there's a lot of healing of the way that you're able to work together with others here, and it's bringing in a lot of blessings and a profound change in your 
happiness and your ability to feel fulfilled and abundant. And um, I like that for you. Uh, it seems like that there should be something a little more profound here, but um, what deck do we want to use next? Let's um, let's go here. I really like the decks that I have here. I've already got such a big stack here. We'll take a peek. Revision of productivity. So, and we did have children. Oh, that's beautiful underneath the deck. So productivity shows the mother and child almost um, revision here. So something may be um, family demands may come into your circumstance. There was uh, the empress can also represent mother energy. So if you're a mother or your mother has something to do with this healing circumstance, you're being able to heal and move through something profound here and to gather your courage on something. So under the deck, we have dependability. Look at this beautiful union here. And under that was coming out rediscovery. There's another child energy. So isn't that interesting? So I don't know if this is a blending of families or somebody that you knew as a child coming back together. There's this choice. Maybe the wolves went on their separate ways um, because for many of you, this will not be a lover but it will be somebody else in your situation that wants to work with you, that wants to come back together with you for, for some type of rekindling of a time of innocence. Maybe you knew them when you were children or it's a sibling in some type of a way. And um, through some type of mothering issue or difference or loss, there was um, a separation and now there's this coming back together. Um, for others, it will definitely be about a union of intimate lo partnership, lovers, energy, rediscovering each other, rediscovering why there's such a profound love if something has um, needed some level of healing or if the partners were both doing their own thing, trying to figure out how to build that proper foundation so that so that the um, partnership would be more cohesive, more synergistic and intra-dependent instead of co-dependent here. Because with dependability, it's about the way that we wear the roles and how we feel about those and being able and willing to shift and advocate and accept and um, and renegotiate and yeah appreciate wants to come back out again the way that we're able to come back together at the end of the day and say okay I need to release anything that burdens my soul um, and to come back into the innocence of the partnership dwell on what you love and don't be misled. You are adored. I'm hearing a lot of animals over there. You are adored. Don't be fooled by the, quote, players, and don't be fooled by yourself. There's no one more lovable nor loved than you, and I know everyone. Precious, the universe. <clears throat> so somebody finds you to be precious and... Um, they're really putting you on a bit of a pedestal here and perhaps you for them as well because you've got what it takes. Somebody is scratching at my chamber door. When fear speaks, it's always wrong unless being chased by wildebeests and when love speaks, it's always right and usually bouncy. Game on, the universe. So... What in the world? 
I really don't want some kind of wildebeest or <laughs> chipmunk coming in here. When you begin to find love in people and places where you haven't found it before, it's always because you've grown. You so rock the universe. Yeah, see that precious. <laughs> you so rock. You're the precious. You are the adored. You are worthy of going on this quest. And it seems to be there's a lot of healing of this old trauma bond. And I've noticed that there's this dragon here in the foreground, almost like the same energy as um, the mother and child here, or the partnership and the structures that they're building together. The structure is the matrix of um, the divine matrix, like not like Neo and what's her face in the the matrix of third dimensional, but it's um creating some type of a a lattice, a grid work that can be built upon energetically, the basis of the relating process and being able to place our energies towards productive thoughts and working together effectively and efficiently towards synergistic goals and objectives. So it looks like you have what it takes. You are being adored, even if there is some tension here. Let's see. Uh, I want to shuffle and get you something for you. Let's see. That was number 14, if anybody wants to look that up. Something about looking for something and it cannot be seen or witnessed, but it's there. It's very real, like the energetic basis or the love in a situation. Love versus fear, choice versus trust. <clears throat> All right, where's our card? Is this not the deck? <laughs> I'm just reading the bottom for you. All right, number 56. Those who know don't talk. Those who talk don't know. It's like that Dunnings-Kruger effect. Close your mouth, block off your senses, blunt your sharpness, untie your knots, soften your glare, settle the dust. This is the primal identity. Be like the Tao. It can't be approached or withdrawn from, benefited or harmed, honored or brought into disgrace. It gives itself up continually. That is why it endures. It's the, the sacrifices necessary in um, love and war, I'm hearing, although I wanted to say love. It's... um. You know, it's um, if you are at war with a lover or somebody that you love in your family or a child, a mother, child, um, parent, child, rather, there's a lot of um, trust and faith in, in the love that is shared. It may not be evidenced, but it's there. And what, what has been entangled can not necessarily go away. So I don't know if that makes you feel any sense of um, relaxation into this message, but it's something about um, if somebody keeps coming at you with attitude, sometimes there's a difference. If you can, um, different situations call for different things, but in recent days, my partner was grumpy and he was doing things that drive me nuts, but I'm so tired of the fighting. And what can be gained by continuing the fight or, you know, when he's in the throes of his temper tantrum, I'm the one that can say, I'm not going to jump in and have a temper tantrum with him. I'm going to use my choice and my trust in the situation and the partner to not project these fears and escalate the situation, but can be the one that can hold down 
the fort for for his inner child right or my inner child as the situation reverses and comes and goes right so in your own situation it's like there's a wounding of the inner child that is um, being rebalanced in the way that our emotional maturity has has leveled up and now our capacity to have healthier relationships is truly amazing and delightful and it's it's lighting up our path forward so yeah um, don't be too hard on other individuals speak gently and um, yeah take your time and breathe through those moments so all right I think that we'll leave you there for the day thank you so much <clears throat> thank you so much Scorpio for spending your time don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I could use your assistance. Thanks, everybody.